फ्रेंड्स आई एम विजय कुमार डिप्टी सेक्रेटरी इन दी गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया विथ दिस टॉक आई एम गोइंग टू बिगिन ए सीरीज ऑफ थ्री टॉक्स ऑन डेलीगेशन ऑफ फाइनेंशियल पावर्स रूल्स 1978 which is popularly called dfpr these rules came into force on 1st august 1978 repealing the delegation of financial powers rules 1958 the rules have been amended from time to time since their publication in the gazette of india on the 22nd july 1978 in this my first talk i will cover salient features of dfpr and its simple provisions which are of short lengths also however i will begin with the question why is there need for the delegation of financial powers we all know that the parliamentary system signifies the responsibility of the council of ministers to the parliament the legislative control of government fund is the key to the legislative control of the executive by the parliament all powers to incur expenditure out of the consolidated fund of india vest with the government in the ministry of finance the structure of governance in india and the area of governance are so vast that it is not possible for the ministry of finance to authorize all the expenditure of government of india it is therefore necessary to delegate financial powers to incur expenditure out of public funds to various subordinate authorities that is ministries and departments of government of india other than the ministry of finance this is the reason behind the framing of the delegation of financial powers rules let us first see what are the salient features of dfpr first these rules seek to consolidate in a compendium form all the orders delegating powers to ministries and departments and other authorities other than the ministry of finance next delegation of financial power rules and general financial rules are effective tools of public exchequer control these rules supplement each other whereas general financial rules have their application in disciplining the financial and budgetary control in government spending delegation of financial power rules 
seek to lay down well defined powers of different functionaries in the government for incurring expenditure from public funds for better and effective control and monitoring of government spending out of the allotted funds these rules may be categorized into three kinds short length rules which are simple rules medium length rules which are a little difficult and big length rules which are complex as well as difficult there are a total of 26 rules rules 1 2 3 5 6 7 9 12 14 16 19 20 23 25 and 26 may be said to be simple and short length rules 8 15 17 21 22 and 24 may be said to be difficult rules due to their being middle sized rules and rules 4 10 11 13 18 18 18 are complex ones because they are long sized rules however each rule each stand alone and self contained there is no backward and forward linkage between the rules in addition there are various orders of the government of india given under these rules however the orders given under the rules 8 10 and 18 are very important there are also seven schedules except for the schedule 1 which lists various heads of departments other schedules are also important these schedules are simple also in this talk i will discuss 15 simple rules about which i have just mentioned but i would again mention names of these rules they are rules 1 2 3 5 6 7 9 12 14 16 19 20 23 25 and 26 rules 1 2 3 5 6 7 9 12 14 16 19 20 23 25 and 26 rule 1 is about the short title and commencement it contains no further information though the rule 2 is of middle length it is very simple in essence it says that the power to relax various provisions of dfpr lies with the president of india in fact it is ministry of finance under rule 2 the president has the following powers first to relax all or any provisions of these rules in relation to any authority two to delegate to any authority powers in addition to the powers delegated under these rules third 
to reduce the powers delegated to any authority to the extent as specified in the order. 4. To impose conditions in addition to those as specified by these rules. And 5. For a specified reasons to withdraw from any authority all or any of the powers delegated under these rules. The definitions of some of the frequently used terms in the DFPR have been given in Rule 3. The definitions of appropriation, contingent expenditure, head of department, head of office, miscellaneous expenditure, non-recurring expenditure, primary unit of appropriation, public works, reappropriation, recurring expenditure are especially important. The difference between Department of the Central Government, Finance Ministry, including the Integrated Finance Advice Scheme and Subordinate Authority has to be clearly understood. It is to be noted, Finance Ministry has been separately defined. In terms of Clause 2 of this rule, it is to be noted that definitions given in general financial rules are separate from those given in DFPRs. Rule 5 is about the residuary financial powers and according to this rule, all financial powers not as specifically delegated to any authority by these rules based in the finance ministry. This is obvious and logical. Rule 6, sub rule 1 mentions that no expenditure shall be incurred against a sanction unless funds are made available to meet the expenditure or liability by valid appropriation or reappropriation. It may be mentioned that appropriation and reappropriation are allowed by the parliament wide the demands for grants of each ministry presented before it along with the budget. Subrule 2 of Rule 6 further mentions that a sanction to recurring expenditure or liability becomes operative when funds to meet the expenditure or liability of the first year are made available by valid appropriation or reappropriation or by an advance from the contingency fund as the case may be and remains effective for each subsequent year. Subject to appropriation in such years and subject also to the terms of the sanction. Here it may be noted that in the first year, the recurring expenditure or liability can be met by three modes, namely appropriation, reappropriation and an advance from the contingency fund. But for each subsequent year, it shall be subject to appropriation in such 
years and subject also to the terms of the sanction. As such, the other two modes may be resorted to only when appropriation has been allowed by the parliament in the each subsequent year. Rule 7 clearly mentions that the provision of funds can be made only by the parliament, demands for grants and appropriation for charged expenditure are presented to parliament on behalf of the appropriate ministry or authority concerned. Only after the demands have been voted and the Necessary Appropriation Act passed by Parliament, the amounts so authorized become available to the Ministry or authority concerned for appropriation or reappropriation to meet sanctioned expenditure. The distinction made between the demands for grants and an appropriation for charged expenditure in this rule is also to be noted. A grant is a voted expenditure. Therefore, it is distinct from a charged expenditure which is not subject to vote of the parliament. Rule 9 of DFPR indicates that a grant or appropriation for charged expenditure would be first authorized by parliament to the ministry or subordinate authority and they would further allot these sanctioned funds where necessary among the controlling and disbursing officers subordinate to them. This rule further provides that subject to any special rules or orders issued by the president, the whole or part of the provision under a primary unit may be placed at the disposal of a controlling or a disbursing officer or the primary unit may be broken into a number of secondary units and the provision under any of these wholly or in part may be placed at the disposal of the controlling or disbursing officers. It is to be noted that this sub-rule authorizes breaking up of primary units into secondary units and placing of funds at the disposal of multiple controlling or disbursing officers. Rule 12 prescribes that a subordinate authority may sanction the abolition of post which it is competent to create. Otherwise, it cannot. Rule 14 gives power to departments of the central government, administrators and heads of departments to declare any gusted officer subordinate to them as the head of an office for the purpose of these rules. However, this rule restricts that not more than one gusted officer shall be declared as head of office in respect of the same office or establishment unless such office or establishment is 
distinctly separate from one another. Rule 16 prescribes that powers to incur contingent and miscellaneous expenditure may be delegated by the head of office to a gusted officer serving under him subject to the provisions of Rule 142 of the Treasury Rules and also subject to such restrictions and limitations as may be laid down by him. The head of office shall, however, continue to be responsible for the correctness, regularity and propriety of the expenditure incurred by the gusted officer so authorized. Rule 19 prescribes that, subject to the existence of a specific allotment in the budget or appropriation or reappropriation of funds or advance sanctioned for the purpose from the contingency fund and observance of the procedure laid down by the finance ministry from time to time the departments of the central government shall have powers to release funds for investment as equity capital of statutory corporations or companies wholly owned by the central government like rule 90 Rule 20 also provides for full powers to sanction grants in aid, including scholarships and loans, upon departments of the central government and administrators. Provided that a. Such grants in aid, including scholarships or loans are in accordance with the rules or principles prescribed with the previous consent of the finance ministry and b the rate of interest on a loan and the period of payment thereof are fixed with previous consent of the finance ministry unless the rate of interest on such loan and the period of repayment thereof are prescribed in any general or a special order of that ministry. This means departments of the central government and administrators will not be required to seek approval from the Ministry of Finance in this regard once the above conditions are met. Rule 23 is about the payment of commutation money of a pension. It prescribes that in respect of a pension divisible between the central government and a state government or a state governments, it shall be computed for a department of the central government to authorize the debit to the Consolidated Fund of India of the commuted value of the portion of the pension of a pensioner not exceeding the commuted value of the central government's share of the pension. Although the state governments concerned or any of them have not provided any funds to meet the payment of their respective shares of the commuted value. 
communication of sanctions to audit in a proper manner is also very important in this regard rule 25 prescribes as under first whenever the consent or sanction of the finance ministry is required under these rules such consent or sanction shall be communicated to the audit or pay and accounts officer concerned by a department of the central government itself after adding a clause to the sanction as follows this order public memorandum issued with the concurrence of the ministry of finance department of expenditure yd their om public uo number dash dated dash 2 whenever the consent of the finance ministry if required under these rules such consent or sanction shall be communicated to the audit or pay at accounts officer concerned by a department of the central government where the integrated finance advice a scheme has been introduced by adding a clause to the sanction letter as follows this order public memorandum issued with the concurrence of the finance branch yd their uo number dash data dash third whenever a financial sanction is issued by a department of the central government in exercise of the powers conferred on it by these rules in consultation with its internal financial advisor or integrated financial advisor it shall be communicated to audit or pay and accounts officer concerned by the department concerned by adding a clause to the sanction as follows this sanction is in exercise of the powers conferred on this department in consultation with the internal finance branch or finance branch yd their uo number dash dated dash rule 26 which is the last rule of dfpr is important because it prescribes the names of ministries departments where these rules shall not apply such ministries departments are a the ministry of railways and authorities subordinate to that ministry b the ministry of defense and authorities subordinate to that ministry in relation to expenditure debitable to defense estimates c the department of atomic energy and space d government of india's representatives abroad whose powers shall be determined in accordance with the rules public orders issued separately in consultation with finance ministry and e department of 
telecommunications. In brief, this is about the salient features of DFPR and its 15 simple provisions. In my next talk, I will discuss six middle sized and rather difficult rules, namely rules 8, 15, 17, 21, 22 and 24. Thanks for patient listening.